Ronald Reagan, boy, go back to when I was just getting out of college in 1981. Uh, Ronald Reagan said, you know, if you're given half a loaf of bread, would you take it? And then he said, absolutely, I would take it and I would come back to it. You know, I'm, I'm all about being biblically based. I, I will not negotiate on traditional home marriage, uh, whether there's Planned Parenthood in a bill, I would not, I would not vote for any bill that is like that. But what I will tell you is that we have to make sure that um, we are able to make deals. You know, and I take that back to my banking experience. You know, certainly we're all going to tell you as good conservative Republicans that we're doing this for our children, our grandchildren, which is truly the right thing and is at our heart. But what separates the other candidates between me and the other folks? Let's look at financial experience. You know, I'm a banker. Uh, I'm a banker and a real estate agent. I've built my livelihood in Lubbock. I've lived here all my life. Uh, I believe that the thing that I have to give to this community and to give to 19 is to know that I can help get us out of debt. You know, one of the things that we have in DC is we have, a, we have agencies. You know, agencies aren't even audited these days. You know, I get audited from a bank standpoint. They need to get audited. You know, our government doesn't even do a budget. My bank does a budget. My real estate does a budget. My family does a budget. We as the government need to do a budget. We need to make sure that from, from a financial stability standpoint, we pick the right candidate who has got financial experience. I work to, I'm, I'm a member of the FDIC. I'm, I run a federally regulated institution. I'm one of those candidates who is responsible for making sure day to day that, that we grow steadily. You know, when you're in business, the first thing you gotta worry about is capital preservation. We all, we all wanna grow, but remember that we need to protect America's capital. We need to make sure that capital's protected. And then secondly, we need to make sure that the earnings of our taxpayers are good, it means program growth means that we've got to figure out how to provide tax reform, how to make sure that our economy is growing with those things. And then growth comes with that. You know, so I always tell people, protect your capital, make sure you have plenty of earnings, and then you grow the economy. And so if we can do it in that order, I think that that's what I bring. I bring understanding how business are run, you know, from a capital standpoint, an asset standpoint, making sure that the government has plenty of liquidity, making sure our management teams are in place, especially with you guys having such a great opportunity with Cotton and being someone that gives that information of knowing who to surround yourself that really understands how to deal with cotton and how to make sure that we have that level playing field and how to make sure we protect the farmer. And it's not just about protecting the farmer. I think it's about protecting the industry. The industry is what we got to protect. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, so just to go a little bit further about, about my position is we also got to think about the farmer and immigration. I mean, you know, 25 years ago, we had to have people that wouldn't do the job. I can, I can tell you from a child, my first memories, we're going out and, and picking cotton and putting it in a brown sack and taking it to this old green truck and putting it on a deal that weighed the cotton and then weighing the cotton and putting it in the back of the truck. Now that's how far I go back. Now I'm 56, so I hope nobody on your radio show thinks I'm 80 years old, okay? But I'll tell you, I have, I have several cousins that farm in the La Mesa area and the New Mexico area. I, I've driven the tractors, but have I ever made a living farming? Absolutely not. I bank farmers. I've got a great guy who understands farming, but I'm about biz I'm about surrounding myself with the right people, making sure that, that we know how this country needs to be run from an agricultural standpoint, from a financial responsibility standpoint, and from an immigration standpoint. So let me get back to that. You know, most of us, you know, most of us, when we grew up a lot of times, we didn't even lock our doors. But today, we even lock our doors at night. And we don't lock our doors because we hate anybody on the outside. It's because we love the people on the inside. And we need to make sure that we're protecting those that we love. You know, also give the example about cutting in line so many times. You know, we go somewhere and someone cuts in line and we say, you know, it, it frustrates us. Well, you know, it frustrates me that people are cutting in line and coming over here without legitimately going through the immigration process. I'm all about legal immigration. I'm all about making sure that we get here the right way. Yes, we need to make sure that we enhance our ability to get good people over here to the United States and make sure that they have a timely uh, ability to, to do that. But I'm going to tell you that, that we're tired of people cutting in a line. We're tired of people uh, doing what they need to do. Do we need to build a fence? Oh, it's such a debate in this congressional race. 
And if that's what we need to do, I'm all for it. I told somebody the other day, I said, I'd build it 27 feet high and 39 inches thick. And, and you know, I just threw that off because that's how many books were in the Old New Testament. And I thought, you know, everything we need to do, we need to think about being uh, biblically based. And back to your question about, about, you know, are you a negotiator? Well, I'm in banking. Um, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about structuring the right facility. I don't want to call it deals, but I do want to say I am about making sure that we get progress completed. I'm about not just making sure that we make the right decision, but also executing on that decision. Executing is just as important as, as making that situation or making that where we need to. So I think, it's, I think it's totally up to us to make sure we pick the right person that's got experience, that's built a business. You know, my business, boy, eight years ago is when I bought this little sleepy bank on the corner of Sly and the Loop. We really didn't have much of a capital position. We started the bank, uh, you know, it was $60 million, eight years. After the worst recession we've ever had, you know, we're now of a quarter billion dollar banks. So, you know, we've got five banks in rural communities uh, that we love so much. We, uh, you know, we've increased our employment by 10% a year, compounded. I have a $4 million payroll a year that I've built in the banking arena. Uh, and I say I, oh, it's a group of great directors and stockholders, people who've been so good to me and people who've supported me and loved on me and helped me uh, make my dreams come true. And that's what I want for everybody else. I want, I want people who are willing to work hard and get out and beat the pavement. And of course, I tell anybody in Lubbock, you know, if you wear the heel off the back of your shoes one time, you'll stay here forever. Well, we need more of that heel losing ability. So I'm a, I'm a big believer that you can do things. We just got to give people the same opportunity. Because I'm in banking, I'll bring up one thing that just dear to my heart since I know that farmers are being consolidation, the agricultural business is going through the, the consolidation business. As a banker, we're going through the consolidation business. You know, with the, the compliance and the regulatory reform of uh, all the new regulations that we have, uh, we're struggling. Uh, we're struggling to pay for that consumer compliance. These banks that are less, that aren't growing, that are less than $100 million, may not be able to afford that at some point. You know, we think of a bank on every corner, but did y'all realize that last time there were this few banks were 1891? So we think about the farmer and we think about uh, to think about how their consolidation and they're going through it. It's not all terrible, but we're losing that relationship, that, that farmer who's got the relationships. It's also about banking. I love my regulators. I got a great, I got great respect for them. Uh, we have great opportunities and get along great. But I want you to know that, that we all know that we're overregulated. We all know that we've got excess tax burden. So the, I've been to DC. Let me, let me mention a few quick things. I'll tell you what they're concerned with. Three things. One's guns. And I will tell you, I have plenty of guns, but never as many as I want. You know, me and my wife, we both have a concealed handgun license. We, uh, we, we carry, and, and you know, that's part of today's world that we live in. The second thing they're concerned about is life. I'm 100% pro-life. I will tell you that uh, I am the, I'm the only candidate that's come out for pro-life without exception. And the reason for that is the other candidates will tell you that they're also pro-life. And I agree, they do have good hearts and they are pro-life. But one thing that they are different about is they don't know how to draft legislation around a woman's life in danger. And so because of that, I've received the Heidi uh, Pro-Life Award in Texas. I'm so honored and grateful to have that. And then the third thing I will tell you that they're concerned about is tax reform. We have to have tax reform to help the farmer, to help the banker, but to help us all as consumers, because that's what we all are as consumers. We must go to something. I'm not so naive to tell you that I know as a freshman congressman that I'm going to carry the tax bill to Senate, but I can tell you that I'm about a flat or a consumer tax, primarily a consumer tax, but we still have a deduction for home mortgage interest. I know that homes are the foundation of our economy. And I, and I also know that we've got to have a deduction for charitable contributions because we've got to make sure that uh, we get people off our welfare system. We've got to make sure that we know that as Christians and as churches, it's our job to take care of those in need, not the government. So I would really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask all of you, all of you out there listening today, that I'm the candidate that will go up there, I will stand up with a backbone, like Ted Cruz, when it comes to standing alone, I'll stand alone if that's what it takes. But I will know how to work with other people. I will negotiate to get stuff done. I will protect District 19, the farmer, the banker, 
the guy who owns the car shop, whoever it is, I will make sure you're protected. I will do everything in my mind. I will be the congressman you will fall in love with, and I will serve like, you, like I should. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.